Welcome back to the Ask Me Anything Smart Couple podcast and show where I answer a question. And we've got a good one today. I want to first talk logistics. Make sure you subscribe to on my fan page, facebook.com slash Jason Gaddis fan page. Make sure you subscribe to the updates so that the moment I go live, you just you're there. Um, it just pops up in your news feed because a lot of us are on Facebook all day long. Boom. You need a distraction from work? Cool. I'll watch Jason for five or 10 minutes, uh, get a little relationship advice. That's going to work best, all right? Because I'm not, no longer doing this on a consistent way at 10 a.m. Mountain Time on Wednesdays. It's just, that's been hard for me to keep, that commitment. So about once a week, though, I'm going to hop on and answer a question and try to see if I can help you as well if you're here live. That's the bonus of coming on live, you know? Okay, so this question is from Jessica, and it's all about non-negotiable needs. Needs. Needs? Where are those? Do I have any of those? You do. You do. You do. I do. Uh, just try this on out loud real quick at your cubicle or wherever you are. I'm needy. I'm needy. I have needs. That's right, good practice. Okay, so Jessica says, you speak of stating and sticking by your non-negotiable needs, but you also say to never threaten to walk away from the relationship. I have said those things. So how do you stick up for yourself and your non-negotiable needs without the threat of walking away, hanging around in the background? Isn't it implied that you'll be leaving if your non-negotiable needs aren't met? I am missing how to do this properly. Thanks for clearing this up. Um, yeah, so... This is a really important question. Thanks for this one, Jessica, because I think people do get confused here. So both are true. Stand up for your non-negotiable needs. Well, first of all, get clear on what they are. Stand up for them. And then secondly, uh, don't threaten the relationship. So we can hold both of those to be true, all right? The question is how. So what ends up happening a lot that I see and hear about is uh, one party in the relationship will be like, I'm psyched. I finally got clear on my needs. And then they come in not so much with excitement energy, they come in with resentment energy because they, they're they pissed that they haven't stood up for their needs and they've gone years without asking for this and they're finally like, fuck you, I'm standing up for my needs. And it comes out in the tone of voice, the way you're talking, your eyes and, and your vibe is threatening. Your vibe in general is threatening. Um, so we don't wanna do that, of course, because no matter how cool and skillful you're being with your stating your needs, if you have a vibe that's threatening, your client, your um, partner is on a neuroceptive level is going to feel it and they're going to feel threatened by you. So best to have the most elegant, calm tone of voice and to be very relaxed and to say um, something like, honey, um, can we have a talk? Yes, we can have a talk. Okay, cool. I, I have some things to share and I'm a little scared and a little vulnerable here. And I just want to talk to you about my needs that I haven't really advocated for in our relationship. And I'm, I'm, uh, be cool talking about that. And I'd also love to hear what your needs are, sweetie. So see how I'm already entering the conversation just with calm. Hey, this is a team here. Let's collaborate. I'm leading with some vulnerability. And then I can say, okay, um, do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first? Something like that. All right, this is, I feel a little shaky, um, and I have some needs here. And here's my first two needs that I'm realizing aren't negotiable anymore for me. And that is, I need monogamy. You know how you've been wanting to have an uh, open relationship? I'm really clear, you know, thanks to you, you helped me get clear that I, that's a need of mine is to feel safe in a monogamous relationship. And that's not negotiable for me anymore. And uh, I feel scared saying that because I realize that might end our relationship. It might not, but it might. I know that's a possibility here. So do you see how I'm saying it? Um, I'm saying it in a way that's considering their feelings. I'm considering my feelings. I'm, I'm stating the obvious, which is, look, this might be a deal breaker. Um, I'm not saying this is a deal breaker. And if you don't do this, then I'm fucking out of here. You're out of here. Uh, that's all threatening. That's all very threatening. So I want to come to the table with my sword down and like, you know, hey, my heart out. I'm really uncomfortable and nervous here and I have some needs and here they are. Um, 
the non-negotiable needs, um, I teach in all my courses and I help you get clear on what they are. It's amazing to me how many of us have sequestered our needs for connection uh, just to get connection. We don't like we leave our needs behind. And um, so you got to get clear on what your non-negotiable needs are. And it sounds like you are, Jessica. And now it's about how do I state it without it being threatened, threatening. And one disclaimer here is that your partner, no matter how skillful and calm and chilled out you are, you could, it could be received as a threat by them. And that's okay. That's their journey to make. But you want to consider their feelings as much as possible uh, without tiptoeing, just saying it in a caring, kind way, but very direct. Um, Hey, I have some needs and this matters to me. And I understand that there's a cost, um, you know, and the partner might say, well, what if, what if I don't, not able to meet those needs? Yeah. Um, I've thought about that and it means probably that our relationship would, would end. Um, I mean, I'd like to hear about your needs. So I'm just stating that that's obvious. I'm also like, Hey, what are your needs? Let's say that we have two totally different non-negotiable needs and they compete and it feels like there's not room for both of us. That's the point is to get a shared reality on, Oh my gosh, this is your needs. And these are mine. These aren't really that compatible. You want growth and development because that's non-negotiable for you. I don't care about that. I don't need to go to therapy. I don't need to read any of this relationship stuff. I don't want to listen to that podcast. I don't give a shit. Um, Oh my gosh. Okay. Are we on the same page there that you don't care about it? I do. It's actually not negotiable for me. It is negotiable. Well, it's kind of not negotiable for you. You're not like, you're not really into it. So it's almost a non-negotiable for you. Is it honey? And then it's like, why are we in a relationship then? seems like, yeah, but we have all this other good stuff, but yeah, but this is one of those things that's like, it's like violence. It's not negotiable for me. Violence is not negotiable for me in our relationship. I will never, ever tolerate being treated poorly. And, but then you got to actually follow through with ending the relationship if you really mean it. A lot of people stay because they make, they, they make empty threats. Okay, Jessica. So hopefully that's been helpful. Uh, you know, I think it's straightforward. If we talk in a way that's caring, we consider them, we include them, we make it a a joint conversation, we get on the same page. And sometimes, guess what? The relationship might end and some people might feel threatened and that's okay. Um, But we do our best, right? All right, I'll take a couple more while I'm here. Um, How do you balance a marriage when your husband works mainly out of town? That's called a long distance relationship, more or less. I feel like our marriage is struggling because... I'm not always feeling like my needs are not, are being met. Uh, when I bring it up to him, he thinks I'm not supporting his career. Yeah. I mean, you know, those types of relationships are very challenging, uh, because Carissa, it might turn out that you actually have a need for more contact and connection than he's able or willing to give. And then the relationship, it used part ways. It's like obvious at a certain point. Um, we have very different schedules and very different values and, um, we don't have enough of a bridge in the middle uh, connecting us to what we care most about. We don't have enough of a shared direction, as I call it. Um, yeah. Guys, we have to be okay with relationships ending. I know it's hard, but relationships end. And it might uh, come to pass that you two aren't a good fit. And that's okay. But again, I can guarantee you, you can have what you want. But you've got to own your needs first. And reminder... We have a couple more days left of the Relationship School's free summer web class. Um, and uh, the replays are up till Wednesday. Okay. And then they're gone. Gonzo. So get your summer hit of awesome relationship advice. And then if you want to consider going bigger, you consider coming out here to Colorado twice over nine months and a virtual learning platform to learn the class you never got in school. Okay. Check that out. All right, action step, make sure you subscribe to the notifications on my fan page to get this live, all right? Another action step, write down your non-negotiable needs. Share them with your partner, share them with someone. Very simple, yeah? If you want more help digging into how to get clear on those, I call them the triple N, non-negotiable needs, then you take one of my courses, all right? Another way to tap in is to join the Relationship School Roots community. People like you meeting every couple of weeks to learn about relationships, Okay, private community, $47 a month. You can apply and uh, I'd love to see more committed people like you in there. 
jasongaddis.com slash roots, all right, to find out more and to apply. All right, guys, have a beautiful rest of your morning, day, evening, and we'll talk soon.